Hi, what's up guys? It's James at Coolest and we are at the Palazzo and we are at the newly redesigned, well I say newly within the past couple years, but it's new for me. I haven't been back at this property in five years and wow, am I just flabbergasted. This place is amazing. Here's some fun facts about this hotel by the way. Second largest hotel in the world, right? Number two, number two in the entire world. It is the 11th largest building in the world. The second largest building in the Western Hemisphere and it is the tallest building in Nevada, the tallest completed building in Nevada. Uh, the tall structure would be the stratosphere, and there is a hotel that is taller, but it's not completed. If you are interested in these facts, I'll link the description below, you can read about them. And oh yeah, it's a uh, AAA Five Diamond. That's right, AAA Five Diamond Hotel. It won the AAA Five Diamond Award the very first year that it was uh, erected, and it's won it every year since until 2014. In 2014, I stopped paying for the certification, and after six years running, why would you? Only here for a couple days, and I'm working, so there's no way I could do this entire hotel, and frankly, it would take an entire week. It would take you a week to do everything here. But I definitely want to check out Wolfgang Puck. It's called Wolfgang Puck Cut. I want to check that out. They also have the Sushi Samba, and of course, I'm going to give you a room tour, and we're going to check out the gym. Just a little preview of what this place is like, but as you can see, they have totally, totally redone it. All right, coolest hotels. Let's do it. This is the Palazzo Las Vegas. Here we are at the Palazzo and look at this room. This is a king suite and yes, it definitely is. Let's start with the bathroom real quick and let's try to do this rapidly. Uh, you come into the bathroom here, you have a powder seat. That's what I call it, a powder seat with a dedicated makeup area here. Um, you have an illuminated makeup mirror, dual vanity, beautiful glass on the mirrors, what's up? Tub uh, is a little underwhelming for a five star resort. It's plastic, uh, it should be porcelain or something like that, it's not shower is a little small so that's kind of where it lacks in terms of comparison to the Waldorf. let's see what type of products they're using here now they are using unbranded so they're using unbranded products again another difference from the Waldorf. Waldorf had fair gallon products beautiful marble right here uh beautiful marble in here marble everywhere separated toilet room with a thick thick door that's cool lots of privacy in there another full-length mirror what's up and let's move on to the majestic portion of this room, really the grand portion of this room, and that is the living area. And it is indeed a living area, and it's very open, as you can see. And I love the sunken living room. In fact, let's start over here. So let's open up these shades. Let's open all. So we did not get a strip view. We got a mountain view, that's what they call it. That's what they try to market it as. So you can see the Trump right there. There's a new, a new city center is being built at the end of the strip. Apparently it's going to be like the city center at the south end. They're building one here at the north end. Apparently it's gonna be a Conrad and three other hotels. That should be really cool. And it may lure back the vibrancy and the glitz and the glamor because they kind of lost it. The Aria, Cosmo, that's kind of the place to be right now. This north end for a while ran the city, right? You had Encore and Wynn and you had the Mirage, Palazzo Venetian. For the longest time, this kind of dominated it. A lot of the traffic kind of went back to the south end. So the north is coming back and there is the new, I'm calling it a city center. It's a city center like building. Apparently it's going to be like four hotels. Um, an L couch right here. This does pull out into a queen. Okay, so if you have buddies, friends, if you're fighting with a significant other, you definitely have a spot to sleep here. Let's check out this couch. I'm not going to pull out the sleeper, but let's check out, oh yeah. I would just sleep right on this. This is pretty good. And you could almost sleep another person this way. You could if you were curled up. But you could at least fit two people here and then two people on the bed. If you wanted to, you could easily cram four people in this king suite. Sure, this thing is probably 80 pounds. Double marble right there. All right, more marble, more marble. And then let's get into this masterful suite. And man, is it beautiful. Um, very Italian-esque. I love the drapes over there. So you have a sleigh bed. 
and then a padded headboard, and then here are the drapes right here. I love the accent bench, and then take a look at the geometric indentations on this accent bench. This is really, really well done. You have another sitting chair here. Um, if you wanted to watch somebody, <laughs> I call this a social chair. And then your mini bar is back over here. And I know, I know, oh, look what's missing. Yeah, I'm quitting caffeine, I promise. That's it, that's it for the initial rundown on the Palazzo. I am floored. So happy when I heard that they redid the rooms. The lady at check-in told me that they did. And when they did, I couldn't wait to come up here. It's fresh, it's light, it's bright. Everything has a co fresh coat of paint. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, well, what did we forget? We forgot this bed test. I like this accent pillow right here. Oh, yeah, this is nice. This is actually light and bright too. Really, really bright LEDs up there if you wanna read. So that's it for the initial impressions here at the Palazzo Rooms, the redone. Check them out. Um, it is a five-star room. I will say that right now, it's a five-star room. This is a five-star hotel. Always was, kind of descended a little bit, but this remodel put it back up there. Was, uh, there was so much to do on this property. It's a compound, it's a campus. I'm not sure you can do everything in a week, but if you're looking to stay at the Palazzo, and you're wondering what the new rooms look like, hopefully this video is helpful to you. We'll do the best we can to check out some other spots on property, but if you at least you're interested in looking at the rooms at the Palazzo, this is what it looks like. That never gets old. It didn't get old at the Waldorf and it doesn't get old here. It wasn't old at the uh, Hotel Bowl Arts either. I just love automatic curtains. It's the simple things in life. Well, simple to me. Okay, uh, this is it. We had two days at the Palazzo and the Palazzo is different than the Venetian, by the way. The Palazzo would be a bit more upscale version of the Venetian. Now, it's tomato, tomato. They are almost identical. It'd be like wind versus encore, but it is the more heralded hotel of the two. And there are slight differences. And I will do a Venetian video at some point. This week, I just happened to be working at the Palazzo. Uh, so I stayed here. And let me tell you, it is so good to be back. Oh my God. Uh, it's only two nights. I worked the majority of the day, so I didn't have a chance to do a lot of the stuff I wanted to. And guys, girls, you would not be able to do this hotel in entirety in maybe five days. If you want to talk about uh, Wolfgang Puck's restaurant, Sushi Samba, Del Monaco, Yardbird, Sugar Cane, see a show, do the gym, do the spa. Um, you have Electra, you have the Dorsey, uh, you have Mott 32. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, I would challenge anyone to try to do everything at this hotel within five days uh, or, or, or seven. I think it would be a difficult task to accomplish. So I was here for two nights, so cut me a little slack in this hotel review. I uh, gave you a little review of the lobby. I spliced some shots in this video of what this hotel looks like. Man, is it great to be back. The Venetian was probably my first love in Vegas when I started coming here regularly back a decade ago. It was my first love, and it became a little mundane it became a little bland it was a little sterile almost like the bellagio i don't find the bellagio's decor very inviting it's um it's traditional and it's really light and bright and it just doesn't appeal to me and that's kind of how the palazzo and venetian were um or became um especially when it didn't remodel or, or put any new investment into the property no new restaurants um no new lounges and no new really amenities and I just stumbled across this place. My, my work brings me to this hotel. I'm actually at working here at the convention center and I stayed on site and wow, uh, just by happenstance I came back and I couldn't be happier. Um, the Waldorf was great and I really liked the Waldorf. Go check out this video. That was a AAA five diamond hotel as well. Uh, this one just had the five diamond rating um, by AAA, but it is it is good. They basically stopped paying for the certification and it is a little political You have to pay AAA every year to come rate the hotel and they probably just said hey look We want it six years seven years in a row. We already know that we're good. We don't want to pay for it anymore um, But this place has been totally revamped the restaurants I used to go to are gone replaced by amazing restaurants Sushi Samba Wolfgang Puck, which I'll talk about in a second uh, they have three new lounges uh, that, you know, the Dorsey, uh, Electra, and one more that comes to mind, which is, which were awesome. I had a chance to really go to the Dorsey, uh, but I want to go to the other two, but man, are they beautiful. I walked past Electra and it was just electrifying. It was, it was great. They've added some modern flair and uh, a lot more functionality to this place. It used to just be a little boring. It used to be a little conservative. I think conservative is probably the best descriptor for the previous 
um, iteration of this hotel. This iteration is awesome. If you haven't been back at this property specifically in the past two years, come back and check this place out. It is it is awesome. I read some crazy facts to you at the start of this video. I mean, it is uh, the second largest hotel in the world. Second largest hotel in the world. The 11th largest building in the world. Uh, the second largest building in the Western Hemisphere and the tallest completed building in Nevada. And it's a AAA five diamond hotel. This place is a monstrosity. And typically I stay away from monstrosities. I like my privacy, I like my seclusion. If you follow the channel, you know that I typically like to go against the grain. I'm kind of antithetical. This place is, um, this place is laid out so well. It's designed so well that even though it is the second largest hotel in the world, Man, I mean, I can navigate it and I'm not really disturbed about it. I mean, I, again, I like my privacy, but this has so much to offer. It's so beautiful. There's so many cool places and it's so cool and modern again. Uh, yeah, I would come back. And uh, you're talking to a Marriott guy. I typically stay at the Cosmopolitan. After coming here, man, I, I, I frankly don't know that I would stay at the Cosmopolitan again. And I have been in the Cosmopolitan since they have redone their rooms. They redid the rooms just like the Venetian did, I think about 18 months ago. And it was a major upgrade. It was much needed. The Cosmopolitan for the longest time was all show and no go. They put all their money into the lobby, into the restaurants, but the rooms were lacking. The rooms were chintzy. Um, it was rated right a five star, but I'll tell you, it, the rooms, the room caliber was not. Now that I take a look at it, to me, the Cosmopolitan is kind of getting a little long in the tooth. And I'm swinging back towards the Venetian Palazzo. I did eat at Sushi Samba. Definitely go check that place out. Sushi Samba reminds me a lot of Sushi Roku in terms of the menu, but just amplified. Instead of the dark Nobu type style, it's more of like a vibrant, bold, vivacious type of uh, atmosphere. I had the salmon ceviche, the Kumamoto oysters, and the A5 Wagyu gyoza, and also both of their signature rolls. Uh, get the A5 gyoza, oh, it was so good. It was amazing as an appetizer. I love ceviche, I love salmon, and when salmon and ceviche are combined, typically it's a no-brainer. This A5 Wagyu gyoza, or the A5, basically the Wagyu dumplings, they were awesome, they were the best tasting, and they had the best value, and they were the most filling. It was great. And then I ordered the two signature rolls. The signature rolls were out of this world. Get the A5 Japanese Wagyu Gyoza, and then get the two signature rolls. That's all you need. Uh, 60, 70 bucks, you're, you're fine dining at one of the best restaurants in Vegas, one of the best restaurants in Palazzo, and uh, those are two rolls to get. I like it more for lunch than I would do for dinner. Uh, I actually did eat there for lunch, and it was the perfect lunch. Again, get that, uh, get the A5 app, get those two rolls, and you'll be good to go. Um, I also did check out Wolfgang Puck, um, and I guess this one is Cut. Cut is his steakhouse, and I might have a new favorite restaurant in Vegas. It was one of the best meals I've had in the past 12 months, easily. I did a Michelin star-esque meal uh, by, uh, was it Pierre Garnier? At, uh, at the Waldorf Astoria just this weekend. So I'm fresh off the Waldorf Astoria in terms of a five diamond hotel and a Michelin caliber restaurant. The Wolfgang Puck meal was exponentially better. Exponentially better. Now that's different, right? One, one was a six course prefix type meal, Michelin chef, lots of courses, uh, you know, fine dining at its best, Michelin star. But if you're looking for a great meal, great atmosphere, awesome location, uh, phenomenal service, you gotta check out Wolfgang Puck. Uh, probably my go-to steakhouse right now in Vegas. I would absolutely go to this place over um, SDK and Beauty and Essex. Those are places more to be seen than to have food, right? Those are more of it places in terms of atmosphere, ambiance, and aesthetics. But if you're looking for a steakhouse, right? Like a Bavette's type steakhouse, SW Steakhouse over at the Wynn, Encore property. If you're looking for a legitimate steakhouse, if you haven't been to New Wolfgang Puck Cut, come check this out. I think it'll be one of your favorites if you like that type of cuisine. But anyway, it's beautiful, it's dark, mahogany everywhere. Um, really nice bar, beautiful glass mirrored background. The stools at the bar were very high, but very soft and very comfortable. You can post up there for hours. My two favorite dishes were the Louis. The Louis was a combination of an Alaskan King cocktail and a shrimp cocktail fused together. It was solidified by like a spicy horseradish mayo and it had some avocado and stuff. It was perimetered by uh, little baby tomatoes. It was awesome. That was my number one dish all night. Uh, number two was the beet dish. It was a beet salad. It was so fresh. It had five different colors of beets, so it was just beautifully, aesthetically, uh, really vibrant. When I took a picture of it, it almost looked like art. Um, it did have some, some citrus segments in there, which I could have gone either way on. Uh, in fact, it did have some grapefruit. I'm not the biggest grapefruit guy, 
if you like grapefruit and beets, order four of these because it was that good. Um, I, I, I liked it almost as much as the Louis. Uh, the only problem was the grapefruit kind of set it back, but I had a difficult time deciding between one and two. The third meal I liked was the Cava Tappy, uh, AKA Mac and Cheese. Cava Tappy is just Italian for corkscrew. It's a type of macaroni that is made without eggs. Uh, it, was in a, it was presented in a bowl that was already cooked, so it was cooked in the bowl, so the bowl came out hot. It was a hot bowl plate, baked bowl, if you will, and had Quebec cheddar. Uh, Quebec cheddar is aged for 9 to 12 months. Um, it has a very, very distinct flavor. Uh, it really has hints of fruit and almost butterscotch, so that was delicious. The two meals that kind of just got a pass for me, I, the maple glazed pork belly was pretty good, pretty small, four cubes, uh, not, not, not that much to them. Uh, in terms of sustenance, it was really, really lacking. And then I tried the Korean-style steak tartare. This, to me, had really, really high hopes. It had a quail egg on it, and it was Korean-style, so it was a, a different um, ethnic flair on a dish I get almost all the time. It was too spicy. Uh, the Korean spices were just too lingering, and it overpowered the dish. So I had a drink at Dorsey. Go check out that place. Dorsey was really, really cool. Electra looked to be a bit more loungy, uh, a bit more hip, a bit more modern, maybe a younger crowd at Electra. And there were a lot of places I didn't have a chance to go, but I can't recommend this place enough. I didn't even sit in this room right here. This room was not even used. And this is 720 square feet. Like I said, when I got in here earlier doing my first impressions, you could easily fit four adults in here easily. All suites, 3,000 rooms. This place is just a, a really a magnificent monstrosity. And I mean that in the most marvelous of manners. Definitely, definitely check this place out if you're coming to Vegas. I'm gonna put it at I'm going to put it at elite. I don't know if it's quite coolest, but it's it's certainly an elite, elite hotel. I really had a phenomenal time at the Waldorf Astoria, and I even had a better time here. And this is a hotel that I really dreaded coming back to, and it just shows in life. You can't judge a book by its cover. Uh, you can't always go off previous misnomers or preconceived notions. Things change, and they have certainly changed here at the Palazzo. If you're in Vegas, check it out. I had a great time, and I'm really looking forward to coming back and doing a full review.